G'day. Um, I've had a student ask if I could produce a, uh, a video describing how to make a stress strain curve. Um, so I might just go ahead and do that now. Um, the stress strain formula we've seen a whole bunch of times. I need areas now. I haven't looked at that in yet. Um, I'm just getting the, the test specimen data from um, the sheet that we had during the, the test this week. So um, we've got a diameter. We can say diameter squared on 4 times pi. Notice this little, if you want to use pi in Excel, it's pi open close brackets, and then you get uh, a good value of pi. That seems like about a reasonable answer. Um, and yeah, I won't name that cell yet. All right, so stress is load divided by area, um, and I don't want that cell to move. I don't want area to move when I drag these cells down, so I need an exact reference. Um, if you've got newtons divided by millimetres squared, that gives you an answer in megapascals. Um, and our strain is going to be our length minus um, original length, which are these brackets in here. Length minus original length. Now, um, it's going to be a bit confusing what I'm doing here, but you'll see the, um, the value of it in a second. So the first C3 is going to change when I drag this down. It's going to change to all these other cells. But the second one, that's the original length, that's going to stay the same. So when I drag it down, you can see now we're still talking about this first cell, the green cell, our initial length, but we're also making reference to the, the current cell. Yeah, I keep dragging this down, and then we've got our stress strain values. <clears throat> now, um, on the insert tab, as we've done many times before, we've got a whole range of different graphs here. I've seen many people using a line graph to try and display this information. And just so you get a feel for what's different with a line graph, I'll, I'll uh, input the data here. So you can see with, with a line graph, we've got just values and a name. There's just one value here. So okay, maybe I've, I've seen a few people do this. That's a strain, series name, strain, cool, add another one, series name, uh, strain, and, um, and values like so. Um, and then they say, oh, hang on, what, this doesn't look right. Why do I have such terrible values? You might notice that we've got um, 17, 17 different load names here, and we've got exactly 17 different points on this line. A line graph uh, doesn't change the spacing on the horizontal axis. All the horizontal points are exactly the same distance apart. For that reason, a line graph is usually used to compare data uh, across time or, or something like that. But that's not what we're doing now. We want to plot stress against strain. So it's really not going to work in this case. Um, when we come to a scatter plot, if we, we were to plot, say, a nice smooth scatter, selecting the data for a scatter plot, I've got three fields here. In the path, in the line chart, I just had values. In this one, I've got x values and y values. Um, so it's a bit more meaningful. We can, um, we can do what we want to do. We can plot stress against strain in this case. Um, now, the, with a stress strain plot, there's a specific way to plot the values. The series x values, the horizontal axis, is always your strain. And your stress goes on the vertical axis. Now, um, you might say that uh, stress is your independent variable, and usually the independent variable goes on the x-axis, but we don't plot stress-strain curves like that. Um, the convention has always been to plot it the other way. It's, it's felt to be a more meaningful, you don't freeze on me, uh, a more meaningful representation of the data. So we've got this sort of curve here. Now, um, you might remember from materials that I, I know I've plotted this correctly because I've got this straight section here up until about 0 .1, 0 0.015 units of strain, the curve is, is pretty much a straight line. That's what we call the linear elastic range. And then after that, the curve starts to deform a bit, and over here we end up with fracture. Um, so that's pretty much it for plotting that, that graph. That's the right way to do it. Um, what else can we do while we're here? We can put in um, some titles. Yeah, horizontal axis below, primary axis. Uh, which one do I like? Vertical text? No, rotated text is probably good. So we can say we've got stress in megapascals versus strain, which is dimensionless. 
Um, you don't need to say dimension within there. I just wanted to point out that because strain is length divided by length, it has no dimensions. Whereas megapascals is uh, equal to newtons divided by millimeters squared. No, I can't do that symbol. Do that there. Copy and paste in. Yeah, that kind of works. Newtons per millimeter squared. Um, yes, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, I hope that's been helpful. And uh, yeah, keep watching videos.